So here's an overview of how the watermark works. First, for adding the watermark, we're going to have the assignment stage, encoding stage, error checking stage, and integration stage. For moving the watermark, it's going to be the exact opposite. The extraction stage, error checking stage, decoding stage, and the reassignment stage. Now since I know this all sounds quite interesting, first we're going to talk about the assignment stage. We're going to map 8-bit characters to 6-bit codes. Now the most important characters to consider are capital A through F and 0 through 9, because these are used for both hexadecimal and serial numbers. Since these recur most frequently, we want them to have the lowest standard deviation of error. In order to do that, we need each of them to be assigned to a bit value with three zeros and three ones. The next stage is the encoding stage, and this is by far the most important stage because even if we cannot erase a watermark from a sound file, it can still be possibly read and possibly decoded. If this watermark contains sensitive information, then obviously having a compromise would destroy the entire purpose of the watermark. The encoding algorithm is going to be a simple rearrangement of the bits in the string, and we're going to do this using a key. Now for a key of length n, we are going to carry out n rotation operations, each with a magnitude associated with the value at that point in E. In the example given, E has a length of 3, and we first rotate with a magnitude of 1, then with a magnitude of 3, and lastly with a magnitude of 2. The end result gets us CDAB from ABCD. This algorithm is particularly useful because without the key, it is nearly impossible to decode. And also, if it, only one bit is flipped, we will only destroy one character in the original watermark string. And finally, the message can be decoded using the exact same algorithm in reverse. The third and probably most complicated part of this process is error checking. To do this, we're going to use a process called hand encode, where we generate four parity bits and one detection bit for 11 data bits. Each one of these bits is dependent on the value of eight others using an XOR. By associating these bits with 11 data bits, we can accurately correct one error for every 11 data bits in a string and detect, however not correct, two errors for every 11 data bits in a string. As an example, Hello World, which has 11 characters, will have as many as 66 bits to represent it, which means we can have as many as 10 errors in it successfully corrected. Finally, now that we have the actual code generated, we need to integrate it into the sound file. And to do this, we can cut up the sound file into 90 millisecond frames. Each frame will represent one bit. For each of these frames, we're going to calculate the fast Fourier transform. This essentially takes a sound file and converts it from the time domain to the frequency domain, where the x-axis is a frequency of a sine wave, and the y-axis is the amplitude of the sine wave. Finally, for each frame, we're going to take the lowest frequency and modify the real component of its complex value and force it to be positive for a 1 and negative for a 0. Since the real part of the complex value affects the amplitude, by inverting the amplitude, we do not affect power since power is proportional to amplitude squared. Since we're modifying the amplitude of these original pieces, we're destroying the data for the original sound file and although it does not have any effect on the actual sound, or the watermark cannot actually be completely removed because the old data is not known and cannot be recovered. Here's a regular 10 second sound file with its associated spectrogram. Now here's the same sound file with my social security number attached to it. Finally, here's a sound file and its watermarked counterpart along with both of their spectrograms.